Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, May 26th to Saturday, June 1st. Okay, so last week we had a pretty all over the place bouncing around type of energetic week because we left Taurus season for Gemini season. Of course, we moved out of the physical body. We moved out of the present moment. We're all up in the headspace. We're seeing time accelerate. We're seeing options and opportunities now present themselves, but we're super divided on what it is that we should do. The element of confusion is alive and well as we kind of process and reprocess a lot of different thoughts, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different possibilities that, of course, Gemini season hasn't even delivered in full dynamics to us yet. We're just getting started here in the Gemini energy. Of course, we had no time whatsoever to acclimate to Gemini season because we dove right into first Venus and Jupiter's major conjunction. This took place on the 23rd, just hours before the full moon in Sag, which just took place hours before Venus moved into Gemini energy. Yep was a big day. Many of us still kind of percolating on some of the realization, some of the epiphanies, some of the new hopes, wishes, and dreams that we started to conjure up under that very powerful energy. We are still kind of watching those dominoes fall, if you will, because there's still a lot of new energies that we have to adjust to. And we, Friday evening, if you're here in the chat, first of all, thank you so much for being here, but we still have not had the major shift of energy. And of course, I am talking about Jupiter moving into Gemini energy here on Saturday, May 25th. So as we stand right now, we are at the critical 29th karmic and crisis degree of this Taurus energy. My fixed signs out there are just in a funk, just having a lot of anxiety, a lot of anticipation as we ride this last degree out. Jupiter moving into Gemini energy is definitely going to have a major influence on the energy shifting within each and every single one of us. It is going to take a little bit of time to adjust to. And lucky for us, this week we are given a little bit of, I'm going to call it a break, but it's not really a break. It's just an opportunity to kind of settle in these energies. There's not a whole lot going on this week. Of course, this is the last full week that Mercury's in Taurus energy. So again, kind of understanding that Mercury is in his rulership over Gemini season, is taking more and more rulership with all of these planets moving into the Gemini energy. But Mercury being in that Taurus energy still has us kind of tunnel visioned and focused on this present moment, what we can do in the here and now in order to create more happiness, more joy, more safety, security, stability in our lives, and the path, the plan, the strategy that we have to be kind of, you know, putting the pieces together in a quicker fashion over this next week in order for us to actually see some forward movement as we move into June. That's right. We're closing out May. We're moving into June. But of course, before we do move into June, we are going to have the last quarter moon pop off in Pisces energy, which I think is very interesting. Why you may ask? Well, First of all, the last quarter moon of any lunar phase is wrapping up a particular cycle. And for us, we're looking back to the new moon in Taurus. Something is coming full circle. We just had a very powerful full moon in Sag, which acted as a pivot point in our path, in the direction in which we will be walking from here on out. It is helping to reframe and restructure our belief system and what is possible for us. And so the last quarter moon in Pisces is definitely going to not only bring some of those full moon realizations into, let's call it fruition, realizations, and materialization in this present moment, but it's also going to put us in a situation to understand where it is that the spiritual part, our intuition, our higher selves need to kind of come down and get integrated, kind of reality checked, if you will, and be a, let's call it partner to this Gemini energy, which I know is a struggle because the Gemini energy is attempting to blend the ego with the higher self, the intellect with intuition, 
that is a long-term goal that we're trying to strive for here in Gemini season. But the Pisces energy kind of wraps up the old understandings, the old visions, the old goals, the old dreams, the old perception, and kind of creates a space for us to start something new. The interesting part about it is, is that June 1st, the moon actually will be in Aries energy. So we're starting a brand new lunar cycle in a brand new month, which I think is going to be very interesting. And we just, you know, putting into perspective, we are already in this Gemini energy and to have the moon in Aries kind of push us into a new emotional cycle, a new intuitive realization that fire energy and the air energy work really, really well together to kind of iron some details out, to put the pieces of the plan together, to kind of cultivate new creative energy, new, let's call it inspiration and an excitement, which I think is going to do us all pretty well, especially as we move into June. We definitely have a lot coming at us here in June. And of course, over the course of this next week, we will have June Zodiac forecast available for your downloading pleasure so that you can stay ahead of the energy, stay ahead of the game. But other than that, other than building towards that last quarter moon, wrapping, out May, wrapping up and closing out May to move into June and kind of moving through the final chapter, the final degrees of Mercury being in Taurus energy, that's all we got going on, which means that we do have time to adjust to all of the energy shifts that took place as we came into Gemini season many of us still not fully understanding what got triggered and activated within us under that full moon and Sag. And of course, Venus and Jupiter's conjunction is going to have a very beneficial domino effect carrying us into technically the second week of June. So that's going to be very exciting too. And of course, with Jupiter moving into Gemini for this next year, we're going to need a little bit of time to gain our bearings. We're going to talk about a lot of that in the Ascension symptoms coming at you here in just a second. But before we do, I have to take a moment to thank you. I need to thank you for being here, for uh, for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank those of you that have chosen to share your love and support in a monetary sense. Thank you for that particular support at this very, I'm going to call it turbulent YouTube time. Um, it is definitely coming in at the right times and very, very much appreciated. So thank you so much for that. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to my Patreon, even as a free member. I thank you so much for dipping your toe into some of the paid content over there. And of course, for those of you that have transitioned into a paid member, I thank you for the love and support there as well. Um, the moon guide this time around seemed to be a semi popular kind of gave me a little bit of a reassurance that you know what people fall off the wagon, but then people come back onto the wagon. Thank goodness for that. I'm starting to lose serious, serious hope in the collective, especially with this healing journey over the last little bit, especially since that eclipse energy has everybody all messed up. But this last Moon Guide episode seemed to have some really good feedback, seemed to prove to be very helpful in aligning with this magical energy that the full moon and Sag gave us under that influence of Venus and Jupiter's conjunction. And I want to thank those of you that took part in that episode as well. And of course, there is still plenty of time and reason on why you should be downloading the Gemini Season e-guide. We just dipped our toe in Gemini season. We just had a huge back-to-back -back energy shift that you should be in alignment with. That's what the e-guides are for. It helps you do a deep dive in your chart, helps you to kind of redefine where it is that you're going from here. If you haven't downloaded the Gemini season e-guide as of yet, I'm going to recommend you do that. And as I previously mentioned, yes, the May Zodiac forecasts are definitely coming to an end, but still proved to be super helpful in understanding where these energy shifts are kind of manifesting in your physical realm in the area of life that is going to impact the most. And yes, June's energy forecast will be coming at you here towards the end of this week. So with all the homework out of the way, let's talk about the ascension symptoms that we are experiencing and can expect to experience over this next week. So let's just talk about the fact, and we knew this was going to happen, 
been talking about it for weeks, that time has definitely sped up. We're in an accelerated manifestation time, meaning there are a lot of choices, a lot of options, a lot of processing that goes into Gemini season in order for us to choose and align with a path, a plan, a strategy. By the time Gemini season comes to an end. Why? Because then we move into solstice energy and that is like a resetting of the karma, so to speak. So we expect time to actually accelerate. But a lot of people have reached out and been like, wow, I feel like anxious, like I can't even breathe because it feels like time's going so fast and it feels like I know where I'm going, but I'm absolutely confused on what it is that I should be doing. Like, I don't know what's happening. Well, guys, we're, we're just like one week in the Gemini season. I tried to prepare everyone for the major shift in not only the time, but in the energy, in the pressure, in the headspace feeling the urgency to have to choose or have to decide. And again, the element of confusion is going to be with us until at least that new moon in Gemini. Things are going to become a little bit clearer at that time. But again, Gemini season is both the vision. And we're seeing that division pretty much everywhere that you could look, starting with, you know, the division of the mind, the body, the soul. Well, the heart and the head, they're not on the same page at all. You know, the, the heart space, I'm not going to say has been removed, our emotions haven't been removed, but we're in Gemini season, which is intellectual based. We have all of these planets, you know, when we talk about the heart space, we talk about Venus. Well, Venus is in Gemini energy. She's in the intellectual realm of trying to intellectualize her feelings, her wants, her needs, her desires. So we're not overly emotional at this time. And if you've been paying attention to the elemental energy profiles that of course are in every daily energy forecast, you would know we're very low on water energy. We're very high on earth energy, um, or actually still semi low on air energy that will be increasing, of course, as we watch all these planets shift into this Gemini energy, but we're low on emotions and we're even lower on intuition, I would say, because of the intellectualized intensity of Gemini season. And so the division in our body, well, one side of our body is stronger than the other. That we're having more symptoms in one side of the body over the other. That can be very indicative of where it is that you have a lot more energetic work to do. So, you know, right side of your body, if you're struggling with the right side, then, you know, that would be very indicative that you have some choices to make to change your physical realm because that particular part of your body is still confused and in survival mode. If you're having more of the issues on the left side, well, that's your emotions, your intuition. If you're having it on the lower extremities versus the higher extremities, then you're having a hard time being in alignment with the plan that you want to be walking, the path that you want to be walking. Again, paralyzed, waist down, a lot of Charlie horse, a lot of, I'm going to say, tremors in the legs, a lot of pain in the kneecaps, rolling of the ankles, Cold feet, temperature wise, that is an indicator that you're not in alignment with the path that you're trying to prepare yourself to walk. Um, if the, you know, the pain or the energy blockages are on the upper extremities, let's say, let's say you're feeling fine from the waist down, but it's the upper back or the shoulders or, you know, the head or the neck that you're struggling with. Well, that is a disconnect that you're not in alignment with the vision, the goal, the dream that you should have clear details on. It is not enough to say, oh, I need to manifest a new job. Okay, what, what kind of job? What do you want to be doing? What do you want to spend your time doing? What does that look like? Are you in an office? Are you working from home? Are you in a cubicle? Do you, you know, like, where are you at? Are you dealing with people? Are you doing something that you love to do or just something that pays the bills? It's not enough to just say, I need a new job. Just like, you know, a lot of people right now with the housing crisis, people are, you know, wanting to manifest new housing situation. Well, it's not good enough to say, well, I, I need a new, I need a new apartment. Okay, well, what does that apartment look like? Where, what area do you want to be in? What kind of, you know, sights and smells and experiences do you want to be having in that particular environment? So, you know, a lot of people are getting pretty lazy when it comes to manifesting. It's not good enough to just say, oh, I want to man manifest my soulmate. Well, what does that soulmate look like? What kind of qualities and characteristics do they have? How are you going to know that it's this person when they show up? 
You know, we have to be constantly focused on the details, the smaller details, again, Gemini energy of the greater, grander goal of the vision of the dream. That's that Sag energy that the full moon was focused on. So it's not enough to have hopes and goals and wishes and dreams and just be vague about it. You have to get very specific with the details on what it is that you want to manifest. Either way, maybe in your body, you're having more dysfunction or more, let's call it pain or more awareness, if you will, uh, in the front of your body versus the back. Well, if it's the front of the body, then, you know, you're definitely more focused on the future. You're focused on trying to, you know, conjure up a goal, a vision, a dream for the future than you are fixated on the past. And like I said, if, if you're experiencing mo more dysfunction or more um, ailments, let's say, or energy blockages on the back side of your body will then guess what you're running away from some issues in the past that need to be resolved before you're going to kind of gain the clarity on where it is that you're going futuristically speaking. So all of these are key indicators. Of course, the division is supposed to be happening. That's what the merging the integration of Gemini season is all about. But you have to identify the distance, you have to kind of identify the division. And a lot of it, even in our headspace, we're debating two very different paths, different options, different variables. And again, we're not supposed to come to an agreement, to an alignment until the end of Gemini season. Your heart space is likely torn between what it is that you have been doing and what it is that you now realize that you want to be doing, but you realize that you can't move forward until you put some endings and closures in place, which of course is the hard thing. And most people don't want to do the hard thing. So now the heart space is trying to convince us that we don't want to grow, that we don't want better, that we don't want to improve because we don't want to do the hard things that just happen to be the right things in order to set ourselves free to do the new things that, again, Venus in Gemini is now out in the world trying to explore. Is the grass actually greener on the other side? Well, we won't know until this particular transit comes to an end, comes to a close. So the division, not only within ourselves, but within our relationship dynamics as well. You'll find that you're not on the same page with your partner, with your friend, with your coworker, with your neighbor. It, you're not supposed to be, right? This is a time for us to see things from a different perspective. The only way that you'll ever see things differently than the way that you currently do is if you're challenged by a different thought, different perspective, different opinion. And of course, that all has to come from the outside world. That's why we move out into the world in Gemini season. Curiosity, right? We have to go out to see what's out there in order for us to challenge the way that we think, the way that we feel, the way that we're operating, what we want, what we need, what we desire, what we thought was true. And especially once Jupiter moves into this Gemini energy, you best believe information overload coming at us collectively speaking in order to put into perspective what it is that we thought we knew what it is we thought we believed in, what we thought was actually true proof evidence. There's going to be, you know, I've been saying this since Saturn moved into Pisces energy. This wasn't even last year. Like we just started dabbling in this uh, particular transit and we, we will continue until like 2025 into 2026 with this particular energy. I said it when Saturn moved into Pisces that people were going to be losing their damn minds and that there was going to be a total deconstruction of the faith that many people have found themselves in, what they believed in, what they thought was true, what they thought they believed in. Again, Saturn's wrapping up a 30 year cycle of delusion and confusion in that Pisces energy, especially where religion is concerned. And especially with Jupiter now moving into Gemini energy, kind of putting, you know, the proof of the pudding in front of us, challenging what we thought we knew, what we thought we believed in. You best believe that a whole other wave of people are now going to be moving into spiritual psychosis. Why is that? Because they can't accept that what they thought they knew was not true. And it is going to be information overload for the collective. We are going to have a lot of proof, a lot of evidence, especially dating back to 2020, you know what I'm talking about, come out in the woodwork here. And it's 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 going to be like proven, so to speak. And that is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way that literally wanted to die on the hill for their cause, for what they believed in. It's going to make them question a lot of things. It's also going to validate and kind of liberate a lot of people 
especially the ones that got accused of wearing the tinfoil hats when all this evidence comes out that we've been saying for years and years and years, even prior to the 2020 situation, there's going to be, again, further division. Now, do we like division? No, we're supposed to be focused on unity at this time, but division is needed in order for us to challenge ourselves in what we believe in, what we know to be true. And so again, this is going to be a very challenging time and the division is going to continue. Um, the amount of people right now that are having it out with their neighbors are is absolutely insane to me. And let me just talk about the fact that when we talk about like close neighbors, when we talk about community, like the close neighborhood community that you're living in, that's all Gemini energy. And so the more we grow in Gemini energy and side note, a lot of the aggression, a lot of the frustration that many people, a lot of the, the conflict, the tension that many people find themselves in, a lot of that is due to Mars being in Aries energy. Let me just say this, Mars, Mars is getting a bad rap. I feel bad for Mars in a way. Um, here, he, he moved into his rulership, okay? You can't get any more of a warrior type of mood and attitude than Mars being in Aries energy. You can't get any more of a bloodthirsty, progressive type of energy than Mars being in Aries energy. We want to take action. We want to make moves. There are no moves to be made. There is no action to be taken at this point. We have this beautiful warrior ass spirit who's been jacking themselves up, ready to hit the ground running to fight and defend whatever it is that we need to fight and defend in order to protect ourselves and therefore cut through the challenges and obstacles that are preventing us from actually moving forward. He's been all jacked up. He's been, in, you know, you know how people get y'all hyped up before a fight. He's been hyped up and we have this poor warrior spirit just trapped, right? Just got ants in his pants, ready to go out and just cut through, you know, the battlefield and everybody's still on timeout. I feel bad for Mars. And so there's a lot of internalized anger. There's a lot of internalized frustration. There's a lot of conflict. There's a lot of tension. We're losing our shit, right? We're losing our patience. Mars and Aries energy, patience doesn't exist. And so to have all of that pent up aggression kind of just stand in there, right? Just ready to explode. And now we're moving into this accelerated time period where everybody, again, for some reason, is surprised that time just suddenly decided to fast forward on us literally overnight when I've been talking about it for weeks. Um, and then, you know, the choices that we're having, we want to kind of move on, but there is a lot of processing that we still have to do. There's a lot of information gathering to do. We're not as informed as we need to be in order to make the decisions that we feel like we have to make literally yesterday. And so that anxiety, that pressure, that anticipation on top of everything else is making people lose their damn minds. And again, with the neighborhood situation, like the division amongst people could not be any clearer than understanding that you're living in one reality and your neighbor living in a totally different reality. Very rare do we find like-minded people in our actual immediate community. And so, yes, collectively speaking, we're supposed to be moving into unity, but the division is needed in order to challenge whether or not what we're kind of, you know, willing to die on the hill of our belief system, if you will, or what we know or what we want to fight or defend or pour our mind or our energy into. We have to be challenged in that regard. And that's what the Gemini energy does. Now, the foundation that we will be building after we decide after we challenge ourselves, after we expand on our mental plane, af after we actually choose our options, the foundation that gets built, that's under cancer season. And we're not there yet. We're just dipping our toe into Gemini energy. And I can't believe how, how manic people are this early in the Gemini energy. So yeah, the division is definitely going to be furthered. I want you to pay attention to the division. I want to pay, I want you to pay attention in your energy, in your emotions. You will feel very high, very elated, very happy, very optimistic one minute. And then all of a sudden you're down in the dumps. 
I can't believe I even thought that was a possibility. How stupid of me. I don't have what it takes in order to get there. Then the next minute, of course I do. I'm on top of the world. I can do anything I put my mind to. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what I was thinking. That's too much pressure. There's too many things to do in order for me to get from where it is that I'm at to where it is that I desire to be. It's never going to happen. And then again, the next wave comes and we're on top of the world. We can accomplish anything. This is the up and down. This is the division. Can't wait for something, but yet don't want it to happen, right? So excited, but yet blah. Oh my God, I care about everything. Oh my God, I care about nothing. This is us. You want to talk about bipolar? This is what happens in Gemini season. So we need to pay attention because again, we are testing out this new version of self. We have to make sure that we have the power and control, not only over our emotions, not only over our thoughts, our actions, our behavior, but over our ability to kind of fine tune the up and downs that take place. We have the ability to find that sweet spot, but we have to be consciously aware of it. We have to be taking every energy and action we can to maintain stability, to maintain balance. Are we going to get there? Probably not, but that's the goal is to achieve it. I feel like the, um, the division is also going to be felt in your ability to feel stable in your physical form. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, our balance is so legit that we feel heavy. We feel weighted like we're not making any kind of progress. And then all of a sudden we're tripping over our own feet or we feel like we're on a boat and suddenly, you know, we're leaning to one side. That balance is out. The Gemini energy has us going back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down. And so we have to be very cautiously aware of where we go from feeling so balanced that we feel low, slow and stuck to unbalanced that we feel unhinged. Like we literally can't walk from the couch to the fridge without tripping over our own two feet. We need to pay attention to the division between the temperature fluctuations in our physical body. We go from being hot and sweaty and clammy one minute to for reason cold for no particular reason other than the fact that the energy moving through our meridian channels right now is coming in bursts. They're kind of they're, they're unbalanced bursts. Thus, why we go from high highs to low lows, why we go from hot to cold, why we go from positive to negative. We have to be finding that sweet spot. And we will not be finding that sweet spot until the end of Gemini season. So this is about, you know, being aware of where the absolute extremes are taking us to and where it is that a sweet spot, a compromise, a meeting in the middle would be super beneficial. Now, as far as the, let's call it anxiety, anticipation, excitement goes, it's kind of like a hurry up and wait situation. You know what I mean? Like we just, we have a tendency to be rushing, which is not going to bode very well for you. You don't want to make any kind of hasty decisions. We don't want to rush the process. We don't want to gain a little tiny bit of information and think that's it. And then solidify our decision in a choice point and then realize, whoop, wasn't informed enough. Missed that, skimmed over those details. And you know what? With Jupiter moving into Gemini energy, that is a particular balance point that we're going to have to kind of suffer through and learn the hard way for this next year. That Jupiter energy has us like focused on the big picture. The Gemini energy has us focused on the smaller details that make up that big picture. And let me just say that when we're flying high, we're hyped up again, Jupiter energy. Um, and we gain a little bit of perspective, information, or details, again, Gemini energy, we think that that's it. We think, yep, finally got the break, finally got that information, understand what I can choose now. I'm going to choose that, not realizing that that was just a fraction of the picture. That was only like four puzzle pieces to a hundred piece puzzle, right? And so that's what I'm saying is like the stop and go energy, the up and down energy, the back and forth energy, the hurry up. And then weight energy is going to have us hella confused. And again, when these older planets such as Jupiter make these major shifts and in ingresses into new energy, there is an intensity there and it can feel very jittery and it can feel very anxious. And again, it's going to magnify the pressure that we have in our headspace. Again, Gemini energy, all about the headspace. Jupiter magnifies, G Gemini energy is the headspace. You best believe that our head pressure is going to increase. Now, a lot of people 
feeling like their head is spinning, like they don't know where they're going, what they're doing. Again, we should have been prepared for this. This was the acceleration of energies that Gemini energy always brings us. This is no different. Like we go through these cycles and act like this is the first time that we've ever had these experiences. It happens every season. It gets to be very monotonous when you understand the energy and the fluctuations. It's predictable. It's familiar. Now, albeit we definitely have different configurations of energy taking place in each zodiac season. Thus, you know, the older planets doing their things and kind of tweaking the overall experience of what these normal zodiac seasons are supposed to mean for us. But at the end of the day, Gemini season is Gemini season is Gemini season. We did this last year. We did it the year before. We're going to do it next year. We're going to do it years to come in Gemini season. It's always going to be a pressure in the head. It's always going to be an accelerated point of time. It's always going to present us with extreme options and choices. We're always going to feel head pressure. We're always going to feel dizzy, spaced out, overwhelmed, delulu, and confu-few. That's confused in case you were wondering. Um, so with that being said... I want you to pay attention to the sensations going on in your headspace. Yes, there's going to be an element of feeling full. I often say like when I, you know, when I'm tapped out for the day and I don't want to use my brain anymore, or my brain can't take anymore. Uh, my brain is full. I'm done. My brain is full. Uh, we are going to have to wait for the reset to happen, you know, while sleep takes place. Uh, my brain is full and many of us are going to feel like our brains are full. Like we can't take anymore. Like we need to step back. Like we need to process. This is what Gemini season is all about. So whether it's feeling full or pressurized, maybe you have a headache or just head pressure. Either way, there's going to be this element of itchiness. Now you may have it in like in your inner head, like an itch that you can't scratch it could be that your hair is itchy or your scalp is itchy or that you have that really weird sensation of that energetic worm moving through your headspace. Not really a headache, but definitely a sensation where there's something kind of creepy crawly underneath your scalp. Um, I just feel like the itchiness is because we are still, I mean, yeah, itchiness is healing. Um, it's growth, so that's good. But the itchiness in the head we're kind of seeing where it is that the downloads that we received over these last couple of weeks, especially the downloads that we just received under that full moon and Sag, they're starting to move down into the lower level intellect that the mercurial and Gemini energy rules over anyways. And we're starting to kind of make sense of it. Thus, the itchiness to that headspace. We're bringing a lot of information in, not only information from our physical realm, but from the metaphysical realm, from our higher selves, from the higher realms of intelligence, from the cosmos. And so this is going to bring a lot of the very weird sensations to that headspace. Um, I want to talk about the hand arm area here for a second. So if you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that our palm chakras have been going through this, I'm going to call it process of being reactivated. What does that mean? Well, our palms, like look at your palms, um, they, are ener they are energy centers and one receives and one projects. And we've been having a lot of itchiness in the palm as of late, as we kind of, you know, heal our creator force energies within us. And we're kind of building towards a time when we're able to kind of put these particular energies into practice. But I feel like our hands are just going through this, let's call it preparatory state. And we're feeling a lot of hand cramping finger cramps, wrist cramps, like maybe you have carpal tunnel syndrome, maybe your elbows are giving you some problems, your shoulders, your neck, like, you know, that song that, you know, the head bones connect to the shoulder bone and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's very much a thing, but we're kind of focused on the upper realm of extremities here. And as far as the hands go, like broken nails, little cuts on our fingers, not knowing where they come from, hang nails that are becoming more and more of a problem, more of an ouchie, if you will. Take a look at your nails, your nail beds. Maybe there's rigidity there. Maybe there's white spots. Don't come at me about mineral suggestions because we're beyond that. These are ascension symptoms. Yes, there is a physical, physical body reasoning for some of these symptoms and an energetic one. And so oftentimes when I talk about, you know, like bruising on the legs, people will come at you, tell you to take magnesium. 
uh, you know, eat more bananas, get more potassium in you. When I talk about, you know, the rigidity or the changing of the nail beds, we're talking about, you know, I always get people coming at you about mineral deficiencies. Again, please understand that the ascension symptom or the ascension process, if you will, is blending the physical form with the energetic form. Therefore, you have to consider both. Okay. If you are having these symptoms only last for a couple of days, well, I would say, I don't know, but I would say a mineral deficiency kind of sticks around for more than three or four days, right? So this is again, where you have to use discernment, Gemini season, use your intellect and your intuition to view these things popping off in your physical form and ask yourself, is this an energetic symptom or is there something happening in my physical form? And you know what? The paradox here that we all need to strive for is understanding that it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. It's both. We are blending the physical form with the energetic form. Therefore, we have to consider both. But yes, our fingers, our wrists, our hands, our elbows going through a cramping situation. Again, we're working out the bugs. It's almost like it feels tired or weak, you know, and a lot of times I don't know about y'all. But I wake up in the morning and I, I can tell where my, you know, my my body's at by the weight of my coffee cup, especially where my wrists are concerned. Right. So if that coffee cup, if you need two hands in order to hold on to that sucker and make it not shake and to stabilize it, then that would be a good indicator that your hands, your wrists are feeling a little bit tired, feeling a little bit weak, thus putting into perspective what is going on with those palm chakras. Now, the itchiness in the palms definitely going to be a thing, but the itchiness on the bottom of the feet and it may it may be an itch that you will just not be able to scratch. We've been talking about the the soles, the soul, OK, S-O-L-E, the souls of our feet connecting with Mother Earth, with Gaia herself. She just went through a major vibrational shift and therefore the frequencies that the earth hold have a direct effect on us because we're the channel, we're the conduit from the earth to the metaphysical realm. And so when we're having like itchy feet or issues with the bottoms of our feet, that is the reconnection between us as the conduit versus, you know, the energy fluctuations that mother earth is now going through on her own damn self and how we have to adjust to those particular vibrations and frequencies. So the itchy feet is also a good indicator, not only that we are kind of, you know, leveling up in our vibration frequency and connections with Mother Earth, but it's also a good indicator that we are starting to feel a little bit more stabilized on our feet. We are starting to feel a little bit more in alignment with the steps that we know that we have to take. And again, we're not really physically taking any steps. We're walking through the step process in our mental plane. Again, Gemini energy. But I just want you to pay attention. I briefly kind of mentioned this, our ankles, okay? I need you to pay attention to your ankles. Our ankles feel like they're kind of out of joint, if you will. Not like you twisted it, not like you sprained it, but like, you know, how sometimes you have to like maneuver it around and kind of crack your ankles, if you will, not just your ankles, but other areas of, of your body as well, because they just don't feel like they're aligned. You know, it's like, oh, like my hip doesn't feel like it's in the right spot or my shoulder feels like it popped out or those types of sensations are going to be more and more throughout Gemini season because, again, we're trying to bring the physical body and the metaphysical body into harmony, into integration, into alignment with each other. And so we're going to have more, I'm going to say, situations where it feels like our joints are not in alignment, feels like kind of gross, like we're walking on our ankle and something is going to like pop or click or whatever the case may be. I want you to pay special attention to those sensations because that is a good indicator, especially if you can connect those awarenesses, like you're walking around you have this sensation in your ankle, I want you to think about, well, what was I thinking at that time? Because you were likely thinking about situations of the future, past plans, strategies, steps that you could be taking. And then all of a sudden, you bring awareness to the physical form where your ankle doesn't quite feel right. And therefore, you should be making the connection that the steps that you're contemplating making aren't quite right as of yet. 
right? So all the physical manifestations that we have and that we experience, there is an energetic reason for it. And if you're really in this healing journey, and if you're really aware of your thought patterns, and you're really aware of your physical form, you should have no problem connecting the dots to some kind of discomfort or some kind of like metaphysical connection to whatever it is that you're thinking and feeling and how that actually manifests in the physical form. So like the Charlie horses, the the tremors, the rigidity in the lower extremities, that's all because we're thinking about, again, mental plane, Gemini energy, we're thinking about the steps forward, we're thinking about the possibilities, we're thinking about the options, and we're getting cold feet. Like we're literally in a state of paralysis. We're just walking around thinking in our mental plane about what we could be walking towards or building towards or creating. And we're not quite doing that in the physical form, but our bodies are responding to our thoughts and to our feelings about where it is that we think we should be taking steps and making movements forward. So again, like very revealing when you're able to connect the dots of what's going on in the physical body versus what it is that you were thinking at that time versus what it is that you were feeling at that time. Therefore, again, really understanding the energetic and physical body connection. So we kind of talked about this last week, but as we move through Gemini season and the want, need and desire, the thirst for knowledge and information, if you will, that particular energy is also an energetic versus physical body connection. We get physically thirsty when we are craving or thirsting for information, for knowledge, for clarity. Because we're in Gemini season and it's an information gathering season, we are having a very, very intense thirst in our physical bodies and we need to feed that. We need to keep hydrated. And again, where we are moving more and more into air energy, air dries us up, dries us out. We need to stay hydrated. We need to be, you know, lubing up the lips. We need to be moisturizing. We need to be taking care of our, you know, oil, you know, our, our, our normal body oils are fluctuating when we move through a very strong air season. Cause again, air dries us out. Air is all up in the mental plane and therefore we're disconnected to the physical body. And we have to become more aware of the physical body. Again, the division between the body, the mind, the soul through Gemini season, we should be integrating those. We should be harmonizing those. We should be paying attention to all different areas of self, making sure that we're not focused on one area and allowing other areas to kind of get out of whack. I don't know about y'all, but I could drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and still be thirsty. I'm not so hungry as of late. And I think the more, you know, liquid we consume, the less solids we actually need. But like, I'm not even like, I don't want to sit down and eat a heavy meal. Air energy wants to stay light and fluffy. And so we're kind of like in this snacky type of mood and attitude. We may not be sitting down and having full meals because again, the the attempt to eat a full meal is to weigh and ground the physical form into the present moment. And that's not what air energy is about. Air energy doesn't want to be connected to the physical form. We want to be all up in the headspace thinking about the different options and variables and possibilities. And that's pretty hard to do when you're kind of weighted down and feel like a, I'm going to say an oversized sloth because you've jam packed all of this food into the physical form. And so stick with snacks. Stick with, you know, putting good snacks. I don't mean like, you know, junk food snacks. I mean like, you know, get your vegetable tray out, get your hummus out, get your pita chips, you know, whatever the thing is. Choose healthy foods. We should be at the point on this ascension journey as of this point that we're not eating this processed crap that is blocking up our energy centers and weighing us down and filling us up with GMOs that are basically tainting our ability to be as light and vibrational as we need to be for this particular part of the ascension process. But nonetheless, you're going to notice that your wants, needs, and desires where food is concerned definitely changing through Gemini season. You're going to notice that you're going to be making a lot more trips to the bathroom. Now, is that because we're drinking more? Well, if we're just talking about the physical body, then yes, that could be a very logical and practical reason for that. 
We're not trying to, you know, make everything mystical here. If you're going to increase the fluid in which you're putting in your body, then obviously you're going to be spending more time in the bathroom. But the energetic reason for this is, is that right now, Gemini season, think about all the times that you have a pair of something in your body. You have two lungs, you have two kidneys, you have two legs, two arms, two eyes, you know, like I don't need to spell it out for you. But basically the kidneys are a purification a detox, if you will. As we're taking more information in, we have to release old information. As we are challenged in our beliefs, we have to let the old beliefs go. And when we are talking about release, we're talking about, you know, letting things go and purging, we have to talk about the detox system in the physical form. And so whether you're drinking more or not, and I am going to encourage you to stay hydrated, but whether you change the amount of fluids that you're taking in, it isn't going to matter. You're going to spend more time, more bathroom trips, more frequent trips to the bathroom to get this energy out of your body. This is a purification time. You know, the Gemini energy is very, very divided, very extreme in that division. But as we gain more information and knowledge and clarity, we have to let go of the confusion, delusion, fears, doubts, and insecurities. And the only way that the physical body can help in that process is through the detox system. So plan to be spending a little bit more time in the bathroom. Okay, so as I previously kind of already hinted and indicated, Um, especially when Jupiter moves into Gemini energy. And again, when the uh, older planets, the heavy hitting planets, when they shift in energies, we usually always feel the most dramatic shift when it first happens. And so we're in this time right now. We're going to see a lot of information come our way. Again, I already kind of spoke about how what we thought we knew, that's going to change. What we thought we understood that's going to change. What we thought we were pursuing, that's going to change. And this is a challenging time because we have to be bold and brave and 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 courageous enough to challenge our own damn selves. So, you know, stagnancy is a horrible thing. We don't do that. Mutable signs, mutable seasons. We are an immutable energy. So we're, we're definitely looking to switch things up, looking to change things. However, you know, as we've been kind of observing and some people experiencing uh, since 2020, like cognitive dissonance is a real thing. And sometimes when you have information come in or come at you that challenges you in a way that you're not fully prepared to allow to unfold or to organically take place, you're going to be severely challenged and not only within yourself, not only with trying to process this new information, but you're going to find The challenge manifests in all forms until you get it, until you surrender to it, until you start kind of reprogramming and reprocessing yourself to open up your mind and open up your heart space to see where this expansion of understanding, of realization, of information can actually lead you into. You know, take a good look around. If you are finding yourself in a very, you know, interesting spot where you're semi-stagnant and you're looking for change, but you're not willing to change the way that you think, how do you expect to ever change? You're not willing to challenge the way that you have structured your belief system. How do you expect to change? You know, I continuously say that the change needs to happen inside of us before the change can happen outside of us. But if you're not willing to challenge yourself in the way that you think, in the way that you understand, in the way that you perceive, in the way that you believe, then you are going to be in this particular present moment until you're willing to change. So this is where the push and pull comes in. This is where further the division comes in. We have to understand that Gemini energy is very much about communication as well, but you're going to find some argumentative combative communication take place, especially, you know, sidebar Mars in that Aries energy, bringing a lot of, you know, pent up anger and aggression to the scene of communication as well. Um, we're just, we're in a particular point right now where we need to be challenged. We need that outside world to challenge us. We need other understandings, other perspectives to challenge us. We need other options and opportunities to challenge us. 
and it never really feels good to be challenged. However, may I remind you, Pluto, the great transformer himself, is trying to empower us, but he's retrograde right now, trying to show us where the power struggle, again, wanting to stay the same, but yet hoping for change, where that is alive and well, and essentially where we're blocking our ability to change, our ability to improve, our ability to move on. And so, yes, it's going to be a very challenging time throughout Gemini season, but this week, we're going to have to just observe where it is that we are feeling challenged, where it is that we're resisting being challenged, and where it is that we're a little bit too fixated in our mental plane of trying to think the same, focus on the same thing, believe in the same thing, know the same thing, where we have to open up our minds just a tad. Speaking of mind space, it's amazing to me, and it will be to you when you move into the observer type of mentality, to know that in one minute, we are like profoundly impacted with a knowing, meaning like, oh my goodness, I finally made sense of that. I know exactly what I need to do. I know exactly what I need to be doing. And then two seconds later, it's gone. Couldn't tell you what I thought. I have no clue. Why was I excited just then? Couldn't tell you. That is the beautiful part about Gemini energy. We are so, so profoundly intellectualized that we're trying to make sense of everything that we're trying to, you know, process everything from the highest point of perspective that we could possibly gain. And in, in a moment's notice, suddenly, it's almost like all the puzzle pieces just magically connect and we get to see the puzzle that we've been building in its realest, purest, truest form. We see the greater, grander picture and we're excited about that and we're hyped up about it. And just as fast as it came on, it's gone. Couldn't tell you. I don't know. It was a pretty picture. Well, what was the puzzle? What was the puzzle actually about? Couldn't tell you, but it was beautiful. You know, is that kind of vibe? And that in itself can be very, very frustrating. So we do have to have an extra layer of patience with ourselves, especially with our memory, with our mental plane. We're so focused getting that mental plane to kind of process the shoulda, coulda, wouldas of the past and the what could be's of the future that we just don't hold on to information as long as we need to in order to actually integrate it. And again, that's like the scatterbrain energy that we all are experiencing through Gemini season really put us in some, I'm going to say funny situations. You got to learn to laugh at it. You know, we're trying to keep things light and fluffy here in the Gemini energy. And so your ability to laugh at your forgetfulness or your ability to kind of, you know, laugh at your stubbornness when you realize that there's new information coming in and challenging you and the resistance that you're holding in your egoic programming of being challenged, those things all need to be laughable. Again, this is an unlearning of the egoic programming. And so we have to have a little bit more, I'm going to say, fun with it. We have to have a little bit more patience with it and definitely a lot more grace. So guys, I think that's all that I want to cover for this week. Again, we're going to have a little bit of time to kind of adjust and integrate some of the energies that have been popping off over this past week and will continue to pop off as we move into this next week. As we wrap cycles up, as we provide endings and closures, a little bit of finality to some particular topics and themes so that we can fully concentrate and focus on the planning that needs to take place through Gemini season in order for us to understand the lay of the land, the foundation that we are going to be building once we move into that solstice energy. So I thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon. 